As an IT professional, we're always looking for ways to set ourselves apart from the crowd, no matter what your position is. Today, we're going to discuss some ways to stand out as a network engineer. I hope you find some value in this episode. If you haven't yet subscribed on YouTube or your favorite podcasting app, please consider doing so as this does help out the channel. So stay tuned. Welcome to Debt Free and IT. I'm your host, Mike. This podcast is for anyone who's looking to get into the IT industry, whether it's for a career change or you're just interested. I think you've come to the right place. Without any delay, let's help you stand out as a network engineer. So my first tip to help you stand out as a network engineer is a no brainer. You have to go for that high level certification. So if you've been into the industry or you've been into the networking field for a couple of years, and you only have a CCNA, I think it's time for you to go to the next level. So the next level would be going for that CCNP certification, which is the Cisco Certified Network Professional. And what this does is the CCNP is going to go deeper into some of the topics from the CCNA. And then honestly, that CCNP is going to help you out more in your day-to-day services along with your job because that CCNP is going to cover more of the topics that you have to deal with on an everyday level. So not only does this level you up, but also it helps you stand apart from the crowd. And then also to further distance yourself off from the crowd, after you get that CCNP, usually most people, I would say I recommend it also, is to go for the CCNP Encore, which you have to take. And then as a specialization, they do the NRC, which is more on the uh, routing and switching. Then from there, you have other specializations that you can go down and some SD-WAN, they have a couple of others, but these specialization certs at a CCMP level is going to help you to stand apart from the crowd also. And then also, let's not forget, if you wish to take your studies further, you also have that CCIE, which is the Certified Expert Certification. Um... Usually, just being honest, uh, I don't know too many people that CCIEs. Um, I have ran across a couple of them, but you don't see CCIEs every day. Usually, in a networking environment, the highest most engineers would go is a CCMP. But if you're on a small team and let's say no one has their CCMP, then this could be one way to help yourself stand out. And also, it looks good on your resume. And also, you will probably get hit up for plenty of job offers after you get this certification. So the first tip, get that high level cert. And the one I recommend would be the CCMP and then going on to that CCIE if you prefer. So the second tip to help you stand out as a network engineer is knowing your way around the server environment. So knowing servers, whether they're virtual or physical, because as a network engineer, You're going to have plenty of applications that you use in your day to day networking that resides on servers. So usually what would happen is, let's say you're having an issue with one of your servers or you need one of your servers to be upgraded. So this is where you might have to reach out to the server team. And then after that, you got to wait on someone to become available, wait on someone to help you upgrade your server. So if you know some VMware, which what a lot of companies would have their server environment on, like vSphere for uh, virtual servers. If you're familiar with that, then you could technically manage your own server, being able to update it, upgrade it, which is going to come in, come in and help you a lot because that means that you don't have to rely on that uh, server team in order for someone to become available for you to do anything on your server. And with this, it helps you to um, better your skill set also. And if you want to go even further and get a certification for that, then I recommend probably the VCP. That's one of the uh, vSphere certifications that they have on virtualization. So that's a whole different rabbit hole you can go down to. But as a network engineer, knowing that server side of things, it's only going to make you more valuable and going to make you stand out from the crowd. The average uh, network engineer, Most of the time, unless you've been in a large environment, most of the time you may not get a chance to deal with any of your own servers. Most of the time it may be divvied out where anything server related has to go to the server team. So if you can get 
some hands-on skills with this and know your way around it, it only can help you go up from there. So my next point in to help you stand out as a network engineer is a no-brainer. You hear me say this all the time that you can't know networking without knowing security. Well, guess what? If you look at a lot of these security jobs or a lot of these networking jobs that are available online on Indeed, if you look at their description and what their requirements are, nine times out of 10, those networking jobs is going to require some sort of uh, certification in some kind of security route, whether it be Palo Alto firewalls, uh, Cisco firewall certification, a CCMP security, maybe a security plus. So long story short, they want you to know networking as well as security. So hopefully that position pays well enough for you to know both, but to help you stand out, knowing that security side of things helps you out tremendously because as long as you know that security side of things, let's say you're dealing with an issue and that issue is something security related, but it's given to the network team then you may be able to go and troubleshoot it and then realize that, oh, it's messed up on this on the security end. So you've been able to reach out to security and let them know exactly what to look at is only going to make you more valuable. So and also if your company has uh, some new uh, security applications that they implement, and let's say I know Cisco has ICE, if they have that and which is fairly new or Cisco D DNA, which is fairly new also. And a lot of companies don't have it, but a lot of companies are trying to implement it. Knowing your way around those applications, you know, it, it, it um, help boost up that bag for you, if you know what I mean. You know, you help, help you to get that bag. So knowing a little bit of security is a no-brainer. So knowing some of that security stuff is only going to make you more valuable. And then also it's going to help you stand out because not all people in networking are familiar with security. So for me, I was in networking. I knew a little bit of security, but I didn't know any firewall configurations, things of that nature. You know, most of my security was just the the basic security, you know, your vulnerabilities, your malware and things of that nature. So knowing the more you know of that security, the more you're going to be stand out and the more you're going to become more valuable. So if you're finding value in this episode, please leave me a review or a comment. If you have a friend that needs to hear this, please share this episode with them. So my next tip, which this is the fourth tip to help you stand out as a network engineer, I would say know your way around some Python and some Linux. So a couple of years ago, Cisco launched this certification called DevNet. Then network automation is becoming way more popular. As you see a lot of companies there, they want you to know some Python, which is mainly used a lot in networking now, a little bit of Linux, which is used a lot and being able to and being familiar with either SD-WAN or some, some form of network automation, whether it be using Ansible, uh, Terraform, whatever um, environment that they have, but they want you to be familiar with it. So me, myself, I'm not too good at Python or anything. You know, currently I'm studying for the DevNet. And matter of fact, I got to take that the end of May. So wish me luck. But if you know this DevNet piece, it's mainly uh, being sort of like a um, almost half developer, half network engineer. If they was to have a baby, it would probably be DevNet. So if you're comfortable around the development side of things, I think DevNet is something that you could uh, learn pretty easy. But if you're coming from networking, then something like DevNet may be a struggle because usually in networking, up until the last couple of years, we haven't had to do too much with Python or any kind of uh, network automation. But trust me, it's coming and it's coming to stay. A matter of fact, it's probably already here and it's here to stay. So knowing some Python and some Linux can help you stand out as a network engineer. So the next point or my next tip and to help you stand out as a network engineer is knowing or specializing in the data center. So pretty much every enterprise environment, you're gonna have a data center, but usually a little bit of everybody works in the data center, but there's only a couple of people that does any of the major configurations or the major changes in the data center. Cause if you wanna think about it, then in the data center, pretty much your uh, Nexus and um, 
your other devices, they're pretty much going to be the main backbone of your network infrastructure. So you don't want somebody who's not comfortable making changes on those devices because one wrong configuration, that could be a long day as a network engineer. That could be a long day, trust me. Um, so if you want to stand out, a lot of companies, if you look online at different job titles, a lot of companies are looking for someone that specializes in that data center environment. You know, you have ACI coming on, a company may want to implement ACI. So that data center, like I said, is real valuable. And most of the jobs that's looking for someone in the data center, they usually pay fairly well because like I said, it's a big responsibility. Any kind of changes or upgrades or anything in that data center, it's a, it's a big deal. So specializing in that data center. And if you want a certification that kind of help you out with some of the data center uh, things, uh, Cisco just so happened, got a CCMP data center certification that you can go after, which that certification, it has two certs. So it's pretty much a similar to a CCMP Encore. You have a um, CCMP, it's a, a data center like their Encore package. And then after that, you go into a specialization of the data center. So this learning this could only help you become more valuable. And like I said, being comfortable in that data center, because trust me, I used to be in the data center and it's overwhelming when you first start working in that data center. It's very overwhelming because in your mind, you know that one wrong cable unplug, one misconfiguration, uh, one change in a VLAN or one VLAN change and you forget to do you think you're adding a VLAN and you mess around and erase all the VLANs. Sorry if I'm getting too technical, but if you mess around and erase all the VLANs, then you know that that's a, uh, a bit problem. But usually in the networking side, you can easily replace it and put everything back. But just knowing your way around that data center and being comfortable can only help you become more valuable as a network engineer. So my last tip to help you become more valuable as a network engineer is being a problem solver. So if you're, you ever been in a uh, IT environment or any kind of environment where you're still doing support, you know, once you get good on your job, usually everyone comes to you for things that they don't know. So you want to become that in the networking aspect. So on your team or your environment, you want to be the one that's able to solve the big problems. Because usually when there's a big problem in networking, it's not just something that the networking team is working on. It's something that the whole environment is aware of because usually if it's a problem with networking, then something ain't working. So knowing being that problem solver makes you more valuable because if you're that problem solver, if you're the one that knows, you know some of the points we just went over, let's say you know a little bit of the server stuff, you know some security stuff, and then you're good at solving problems and you're good at designing networks and creating ways, uh, creating paths, ways for uh, traffic to get to certain areas from their source to the destination area. If you're good at all of those pieces, you want to be the one that whenever you leave, you want people to be sad because you're like, oh, he was a good guy. She was a good, good girl. You know, they, they was able to solve problems. You know, you want to be the one that when someone calls, they're like, hey, is such and such available? I want to speak to them. They helped me out last time. And usually just from being a good employee and as you get more experience, you start to see everything. So just having a way to remember what you done saw because some things come up more than once. But the trick is some things may not come up for a couple of years. You might deal with one issue, then that issue might not reappear until two to three years. But having a way to uh, keep track of everything other than, you know, you're going to have your ticketing system at your place of employment. but if you got your own catalog of things where you, you took your notes and said that, okay, when this issue happened, this was the way that we fixed it, you know, that that's going to help you become that problem solver. So my last tip, and I think that's probably the most valuable tip out of everything is just being able to solve problems. That's your main goal. You know, you want to be able to solve problems. If that network's down, you want to know how to, you want to know to how to solve that problem to get that network back up and running. Trust me, you'll become a, a key player in everyone's book. The downside is you're probably going to start being requested a lot, which may overwork you, but hey, 
you're going to be valuable. So that brings me to the end of this episode. Don't forget to follow me on IG and TikTok at Debt Free and IT. If you have any questions or comments or topic suggestions, email them to me at debtfreeandit at gmail.com. Other than that, I'll see you next week. Peace.